one of the nation's favourite comedians. And now John Bishop is about to launch his own Saturday night TV show. Mm -hmm. On the telly too, and Doctor Who. And if that wasn't enough, uh, he's setting off around the UK on a huge stand-up arena tour showcasing his unique brand of humour. <laughs> <laughs> so true. John joins us now. Good morning. It's so nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to be here. It is, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it? So good. And so good to see you back out on tour, where it's exactly where you should be. You've been touring for a bit, but this this is exciting because you're going to the arenas in February. So yeah. This huge audience. Well, this is a catch up. I was I was on the road when the first lockdown happened, yeah. and so we had the the tour all planned, and it builds up from small sort of pub venues right up to arenas, and then we stopped. And then obviously didn't know when to reschedule it. And yeah. then I did Doctor Who and that, you know, became part of the scheduling process. So I, I went back on the road at the end of August and we kind of condensed a year into six months. So it's a bit hard. bonkers. Like I was yeah. in Nottingham last night, I'm in Pool tonight, I'm all over the place doing the theatres. But then we build up to the arenas, which are the uh, sort of the the target uh, yeah. in the end in February through tomorrow. You mentioned there in, in in the clip that we showed. You know, what do you talk about? What what do you do? Netflix, hey. Um, <laughs> what's it like for you now to be back out and seeing faces? Oh, it's, it's it's unbelievable, and there's a real sense that people are desperate to get out. You know the. The news and the media is always looking at this, this might be happening, that might be happening, but people need to be out. We need to be enjoying ourselves and living a life, and you can just sense it. Mm -hmm. And particularly with my audience, my audience are an older audience. So I'm there with the people who, who are being told, be scared, and they're going, no, we want to get out. We want to, we want to enjoy life. We want to be part of a community. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing. I can't tell you how much I don't think I realised how much I missed it. To say something and hear a room full of strangers laugh. Yeah. It's yeah. all at the same time. It's such a, a, a self-fulfilling thing. It's great. Yeah, a bit magic. Well, you actually go one step further on making sure they have a good time and you've got these badges and this say hello initiative. Yeah, what that is, I, I had a friend who's like, a, I keep on calling him a hippie, but I suppose that's what he is. And, he was, a few years ago, living in Weymouth and noticed that when you went on a bus or at a bus stop, no one looked at each other, they just looked at the phone. So we started a campaign uh, where you give out badges and it's kind of an icebreaker. The badge then said, you know, give it a go. And it was basically saying, give it a go, just say hello to me because mm. I'll say hello back. I won't think you're a weirdo. Because, you know, let's be honest, if you're on a bus and someone goes, hello, you go, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Panic. So, so we've changed it to say hello to make it a clearer message. And it also came about because I did a couple of just a couple of like Q and A's on lockdown. And I noticed a few people on the Zoom things, the Zoom gigs were on their own. And I thought, would they feel comfortable coming to a gig on their own? Yes. And when you think about it, there's nothing more unifying than being in the same room at the same time mm. with people coming to the same event. You've got something in common, but mm. no one says anything. So we've got this initiative where we give out badges. We're doing it with an organization called Shout. They were a mental health charity and people can choose to wear a badge. And what that badge is saying is that it's an icebreaker. Unbelievable. I mean, we've given out nearly 40,000 badges. Have you really? It's just flown and oh. people are embracing it. And just at the gig, they're literally, yeah. no one has to give any details, just have to look at someone and go, hello, how are you? Have a chat. And sometimes, like the little things that ICV are doing, sometimes that's enough. Mm, yes. Mm. That's yeah. enough because the thing that gets me is, is with all of the pressure that we've had with lockdown, yeah. we've had mental health pressure with people feeling lonely. And loneliness to me is the heaviest weight in the world and it's the easiest thing to change because all you need to do to stop someone being lonely is say hello to them. Yeah, and connect. And Have that's that it. connection. One of, the, uh, so one of the good things that uh, came out of rescheduling, changing, because I think initially you said no to Doctor Who because yeah. you, could, you couldn't do it because of your schedule, and then suddenly the window opened up. Oh, yeah, I was so lucky. I mean, listen, it's been a terrible time for the world, but it was great for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got the Doctor Who gig and I couldn't do it when we first did. And then, these, then, then this, obviously COVID happened and I asked if I could uh, you know, audition for it and get, mm. see if it was still an option. And I managed to get it and I've had a brilliant time doing it. He's a nice man, isn't he? They're your character. Oh, He's Dan. just a nice person. Yeah, Dan's a lovely man. He's, uh, I mean, it's great because he happens to look and sound a lot like me as well. So it's not, I wouldn't say it's a massive stretch, but he, he, he's a nice guy. And also, 
you're going into Doctor Who, you're going into something iconic. Yeah. And, you know, Jodie was there last season as the Doctor, and Amanda's been there, and the, the whole... You know, we were working in a bubble, but everyone was so inclusive. Nice to be part of something. Oh, it was brilliant. Well, you're going into something else, which is really exciting, and that's the Saturday night show as well. Yeah, so this yeah. This is big. Yeah, again, that was meant to happen during the first phase and then the first lockdown, so we've put it, put it back. And yeah, and it's a, it's a Saturday night comedy chat show. Basically, I'll go on, do some stand-up, and we'll have a couple of guests on and have a chat with them. And what's your venue? Is it in a studio or is it a theatre? It's or... going to be in a studio. We're going to be filming it at Riverside Studios, and we're going to do it on the Saturday. So we're it's going to powerful. do it like the American model, where you do it on the day that it goes out, yeah. so oh, it's as, as relevant as it can be. Yeah. And still doing your podcast? Still doing a podcast, Three Little Words, which I love. I do it with my mate, Tony Pitts. And it's basically based on the idea that people bring three words that mean something to them. So we sit down and it's a great way of getting into people. You should both come on. Oh, loved there you it. Go. Yeah, Absolutely. loved that, right? Yeah. The booking. I've come on. I've pushed me tour. I've booked two guests for my podcast. What a good day that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, well done you. So the tour, as we said there, I mean, you're out and about, as I said, every single night. But the big ones, the big arena tours is from February the 22nd. So thank yeah, you very yeah. much. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Right, in just a moment. We'll I, sorry, I just said on. thanks for coming on. Yeah, you did, like <laughs> This is what happens. You do, you do one <laughs> Saturday night show and you come in here and take over. <laughs> thanks for coming on. It's your show. All of us. We'll be back after the break. <laughs>